Okay, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. A risk disclaimer, a trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. So for more information, you can go to bookmap.com and uh, there's a free trial uh, for 14 days. Uh, not only will you get access to the platform for 14 days, uh, fully featured, uh, but you also have access to a lot of the resources, okay? One of them being the advanced order flow webinars that start in about uh, uh, 28 minutes or so. Uh, and then uh, you can uh, reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Okay, let's take a look at the website here quickly. Uh, scroll up to the top. So uh, click on explore here and uh, you'll just drop down into some of these intro videos here. You can watch some of those, get a feel for what's going on in Bookmap. They're very short. Some of the uh, features, benefits, uh, et cetera, uh, some of our partners. Uh, scrolling down here, uh, there's also NASDAQ Total View. So we have a, uh, you can see some of the advantages here uh, in Bookmap um, using uh, the equities uh, feed. So this is, uh, we've had this now for some months. Uh, it's an excellent feed, so you can now look at the uh, actually uh, unlimited order book uh, in uh, in equities. It's a real nice data feed. Anyway, uh, further down, uh, connectivity. Uh, we are a platform, software platform, fully featured platform, uh, just like NinjaTrader or uh, TradeStation or Thinkorswim. Uh, However, we're not a data provider, so you will need your uh, uh, broker or data provider here. Uh, this is how you can connect Bookmap to the markets. Okay, a little bit further down under their pricing tab, uh, there is uh, these different features here. So there's Bookmap Basic uh, in general, 49 per month, build quarterly, uh, and you get the 14-day trial period. Okay, Bookmap Advanced is the same Bookmap Basic except that you get these added features. One is the ability to trade right from the bookmap chart. This is actually quite nice because uh, you're able to see the uh, liquidity uh, and hide orders uh, behind uh, uh, or in front of uh, that liquidity uh, to um, uh, enhance your, uh, your trading uh, and your execution. Uh, we also have a host of proprietary indicators that we have created uh, that are specific to the uh, order book and volume uh, that we uh, that we study. All right, and then uh, for those of you who are quants and want to learn more, there are other features connecting your own data feed uh, uh, and um, uh, estimation in the queue, etc. Um, all right, so if you haven't yet and you want to find us on Twitter at Bookmap underscore pro you can follow us there we can also go to the, um, the YouTube page here uh, we have an intro video that you can see and um, you can you can subscribe to our, our YouTube channel uh, and there's uh, features and components here uh, this is a um, there's actually some new features and components to go over uh, we just uh, uh, sent sending out an email today uh, to cover some of those I can uh, uh, show you some of those today as well. Uh, let's click on the on the playlist here, and uh, you get the Bookmap 6.0 overview, five uh, overview, correlated correlation tracker, etc. But uh, down in this area here, uh, we can see the. Um, let's get rid of this one. Okay, uh, we have uh, new features on the candlesticks and the aggregate volume counters. Okay, so um, we can cover a little bit of that in this webinar if you like. Uh, and um, let's go back. Uh, and um, there's also a new video snippet here. Now, these video snippets, um, uh, for those of you who are new, I, I would um, encourage you to watch some of the features and components to understand what Bookmap is showing you. Next, watch some of the video snippets. Now, we just uh, uploaded a new one here, and it's four and a half minutes. Uh, it goes over the context of volume and liquidity in a trend. Okay. This is something we covered in the live webinar just a, a couple days ago. Uh, these are for the advanced uh, order flow uh, webinars. Okay, so uh, this is um, these videos here give you kind of a quick overview and understanding of some of the concepts that we cover in in the uh, uh, real time uh, live markets uh, during those webinars. Okay, all right. Well, let's jump into Bookmap and take a look. 
uh, we've seen, uh, well, let's look at an actually higher time frame here. We see some volatility come in, all right? So uh, S&P is off uh, quite a bit. And uh, we're looking for a little bit of a cleanup here uh, as we just continue to grind and trend higher in uh, uh, very, very uh, small ranges. Uh, and then um, uh, we've been looking at the NASDAQ. So uh, why don't we just continue on, or maybe we can... See, what is the range here? 43 to, eh, so we're about 10 point range. Uh, let's see. Here's our 930. Well, yeah, let's, we'll stick with the NASDAQ, I think. Uh, and um, uh, just uh, we'll see a little more uh, price movement here uh, back and forth. Uh, but uh, there's a higher time frame trend that we broke. And, and um, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's jump in and take a look. Okay. Okay, so uh, I've got my book map open actually a, a few minutes after the 9.30 open, so I missed some of the initial uh, volume. But you can see the uh, immediately uh, we kind of, uh, well, we, we go sideways for a bit and then just drop off right here uh, and uh, and continue on down. We get, we get a nice pullback to where we dropped from. Uh, that was uh, not too long ago. And uh, now we're just kind of going sideways. Okay, so anyway, uh, for those of you who are new here, uh, and uh, uh, this might look uh, rather foreign to you. Uh, we're going to cover what exactly Bookmap is showing you here uh, and how to understand it and then uh, uh, start to read the order flow uh, as well, get into a little bit of it uh, so uh, uh, you, you get an understanding of what we go through more in the, uh, in the live order flow uh, advanced webinars. Okay, so we're looking at basically only three things here in the chart. Okay, we're looking at historical best bid and offer, volume, and the liquidity, okay, historical liquidity. Okay, so the, the heat map is the liquidity here, all right? So these are, these are traders lined up to trade at these levels. We're showing you uh, where they are on the offer and where they are on the bid. Okay, and on the historical best bid and offer, we're showing you the volume, where it traded, okay? What type of volume it is and how much. Okay, so uh, to uh, get this point across, uh, let's turn on the uh, a candlestick chart here, uh, and um, we're going to look at uh, just this uh, five-minute candlestick chart, uh, and we're going to take off all of the other data that we have here, and we'll, we'll uh, define it as we go through. So I'll take off the volume dots, okay, off the historical best bid and offer, and the heat map. Okay. Now we actually have a pretty nice new feature here on the candlestick. You can see these uh, uh, these details on the candlestick. Okay, so um, what it's showing uh, is the um, we're looking at a VWAP of the five-minute period, okay, and uh, the uh, VWAP of the aggressive market buys and aggressive market sell orders. Okay, so uh, now we're we are showing a little bit more than your traditional. A candlestick chart by showing you the overall of that five minute period or whatever um, uh, a time period you're you're studying here so you get an understanding of really where that volume is starting to trade all right so we're already showing something more than uh, your traditional candlestick chart but still we don't have an understanding of where that volume traded Okay, how much traded there? And then what was the type, aggressive buying or aggressive uh, selling? Uh, and that's a, that's a problem here because uh, we're making financial trading decisions on uh, a lack of transparency here, a lack of information, insightful information uh, that can, get a, that can uh, allow us to create better uh, trading decisions. Okay, so that's the problem with this candlestick chart. Uh, there's just uh, so much information here that we are simply not seeing. Uh, and uh, let me uh, demo this. Okay, so we're going to turn on best bid and offer. All right, and already we're seeing quite a bit more. Uh, and uh, why or what do I mean? Okay, so we're just taking the historical best bid and offer and projecting it uh, his on the, onto the chart here. Here's our best bid and offer right now, and it's just uh, recording it. Okay, and uh, what this allows us to do, though, is start to see microstructural areas on the chart. Okay, five-minute candlestick chart just aggregates that back and forth within that time period. Okay, but instead, now we can see, for example, look at the, uh, well, this is uh, not, not a bad example because look at the size of the wick on this uh, candlestick here. Now, we dropped from 
this this area up here around um, uh, 6075 pretty quickly. Uh, and then we consolidate it in a range here, but look at the, how this range is um, uh, forming. Okay, we can see that uh, uh, you know although it's going back and, and still making lower lows and lower highs here, um, you, you know we, we it's it's got pressure to the downside, right? This is a pretty big drop, and we still see that there's pressure to the downside. This candlestick's telling us here that there's buying pressure coming in. Uh, it looks like there might be quite a bit of buying pressure. So based on this, you might be, you start to think that uh, uh, it might trade back into the range up here. Okay, that's a possible scenario. Uh, but uh, we're already getting a feeling of the uh, microstructural areas here that there is a lot of uh, a, a lot of pressure in the downside of this market. Okay, so let's turn on the volume and then we can uh, really start to read it now. Now we're looking at where the volume traded on the historical best bid and offer. Okay, we're getting a feeling of uh, exactly uh, what transpired here and transacted in the marketplace. I'm going to click on the hand tool. I'm going to hover over this area, and I'm going to zoom in really quickly. You can left click, hold, and drag. Uh, but uh, we're going to zoom in really quickly uh, into this area by just using the center mouse wheel. Okay, so now we're looking at this uh, five-minute period here between these two. Actually, let me zoom out just a little bit more. Okay, so each uh, vertical dotted line here is a minute worth of data. Okay, uh, and this is between these, this five-minute period. So you can see that uh, the the um, open uh, we just had a, a little bit uh, a little bit of a, a move to the upside on this wick, and then it went straight down. Okay, uh, and um, and we see that that the the microstructure here is showing us the pressure, and we see buyers do come in here, okay, and they do break this uh, trend or this uh, uh, this structure here uh, to the upside. Uh, however, uh, looking at this, uh, we we have no clue uh, of of really what's happening within this five minute period. Okay, we don't see any of this de detail and data. Right. Uh, and um, it gives us a lot of insight, a lot of insight to the buying and selling pressure where these traders are lined up to trade. OK, so um, uh, anyway, the um, let's zoom into an area, uh, maybe this low here. OK, and I want to show you how we're recording the uh, the data here. OK, so uh, we're, this is the historical best offer. The uh, red line and the best bid is the green line. Okay, you can see that there's a little bit of a spread in the gap here. Okay, and uh, uh, the the best uh, offer went up with one more tick, and then finally uh, we got uh, the gap closed here, as you can see. That's all we're showing here. Now the the transactions are these dots. Okay, and if you see a green dot, uh, this is a, an aggressive market buy order. It's aggressive because someone crosses the spread, they they pay up, they hit the market buy button. And they take liquidity off of the uh, the best offer. Okay, an aggressive market sell is a red dot uh, here on the uh, on the best bid. Okay, so we're uh, we're showing you all these details. Now we can continue to zoom in uh, to an area, and uh, let's uh, look at this uh, transaction here. We see this pie display. Well, what's occurred here is so many transactions have occurred so quickly uh, that uh, we're giving you the overall understanding and delta of the volume that traded here. So it's mostly aggressive selling, as we can see, because it's mostly a red. Uh, but there's a sliver in that pie display that's showing us that there's some buying in here as well. So let's hover over this dot and start to zoom in. And now we can start to see exactly what transpired here. Now there's a little bit of latency here because we're, we're going to start to drill down into, um, well, right now we're looking at uh, milliseconds. So these are thousands of seconds. Okay. We're going to start to zoom in, though, and we're going to look at some of these areas. And note how I'm pulling apart all of these trades, and we're showing you every single event that took place here in the market. Okay, It is all recorded in Bookmap. There's no aggregation here whatsoever. Okay, uh, And uh, you can use the um, uh, data tip tool, and we can see this was for a volume of one. Okay, I get the date, the time, what was on the ask here. At this price level of 60, 66, uh, and then the volume as well. 
Okay, so now uh, note that as I start to zoom back out though and I compress that timeline together, okay, I'm just visually, or book map is just visually aggregating this into a bigger dot. Okay, and we can hover over that dot and it gives me volume of 48. That's what occurred here. All right, so, uh, and I continue to zoom out. Okay, compress that timeline more and more we get the overall feel for it because we're not trading at uh, nanosecond or microsecond level. Uh, we're trading off of higher time frames, but we get the overall shape and understanding of what occurred here. Okay, and that's a tremendous uh, advantage, and it's an advantage also over your footprint charts uh, because uh, footprint chart is going to be similar to that candlestick chart. It's going to aggregate back and forth within a time period or maybe uh, um, a price rotation, okay? So it just might rotate back and forth for a, quite a while uh, until uh, uh, either the time is up or the um, uh, rotation breaks uh, uh, the uh, inputted amount uh, and then a new candle will form. Instead here, now we can understand really what occurred and how price was accepting down here in a microstructure and then look at how the buyers came in and broke uh, up to the upside and traded back into this range up here. Okay, uh, and um, and we see it uh, uh, on uh, as we start to zoom out more and more, uh, putting all of the pieces together here. Okay, for all of those little structural areas, and uh, these markets are fractal. So now we have an understanding of what occurred in some of these structures. Okay, uh, and that's the the advantage that uh, you're getting here now. Uh, you may think that, uh, well, you know, uh, that's that's fine. I, I don't really need to see some of those structural areas. But like I said, these markets are fractal, and you're going to see the same patterns re repeat again and again. Uh, but uh, you can uh, get in here uh, quicker on some of these trades uh, if, uh, like, for example, let's say you are looking for a reversal at this point. Okay, uh, You know, you'd be looking for uh, maybe um, uh, the aggressive buying to come in here, Okay, and it did. And it pulled back to where? Where the aggressor uh, uh, broke this, this little structural area here. Pull back here, move to the upside. Okay. The aggressor is, uh, buyer is now in control here. Okay. Only up to this point though. Okay. And then the sellers come in and they really start to hit the bid uh, in this area here uh, and pull price to new lows. Okay. So anyway, you can, you can really uh, see the details here or you can zoom out and see the bigger picture. All right, now that's just the volume. Uh, we can also show you the uh, uh, the, the uh, historical best bid and offer. And um, uh, you know, to understand the um, uh, the dome, okay, uh, and it's an important part of the order flow. It's not just traded volume. Okay, and why is it important? Well, let's zoom in here to the current market right now, and here's our dome and book map, this COB column, okay, current order book. Best bid and offer right here. Uh, depth here on the on the offer. Depth here on the bid. These are traders lining up, providing liquidity they, with their limit orders. They want to deal at these specific price levels. That's how the market works. We want to understand this this uh, this auction here. Uh, well, look at 6080 up here. Pretty high liquidity. Okay, uh, and uh, it's the highest in the book right now. Okay. Now, as these numbers change, though, we lose this data. And that's a problem, okay? Because we, now we don't know. Well, you know, what was the liquidity up here at 60, 60 80? Well, it's, it's been, uh, it's outside of the limit order book at the moment, so it's historical. Uh, and uh, we'll have to remember that uh, area and that there was trading interest up here, okay, uh, previously. Okay? And that's, uh, you start to have to remember quite a bit, and it can be pretty taxing uh, to uh, remember all of those zones, the liquidity was there before and the areas around it and how they're behaving. Okay, uh, and now instead what Bookmap does to solve this issue is we take these, this uh, liquidity here, okay, at 6080 for example, and we paint it into the heat map, okay, in this window, the live window here, best bid and offer, okay, and, uh, and you can see that uh, we've painted it with um, uh, the heat map and is, is brighter up in this area here uh, to show that high liquidity. Okay, and we can see down here at, at uh, 76 we have uh, high liquidity on the bid. 
All right. So now we have an understanding of it, of this uh, limit order book, just graphically. All right. So when uh, when it, liquidity is pulled, uh, it it turns darker. When it is uh, when uh, liquidity is added, it turns brighter. Okay. Just like you can see. Where it gets interesting is we take this data and we, we record it, and to the left of this vertical white line here, uh, it is projected onto the chart. Okay, so look at these areas here, and you can start to understand how they're starting to behave here on the offer uh, and on the bid, and we get the intent of these traders and understanding of the context uh, of their intent to trade at these at these price levels. Okay, if they start to pull liquidity, well, they're not too interested. If they stay in the book and uh, we trade into it, we know that they have the intent to trade, okay? As you can see here, we're, we're starting to judge this 60-80 area. And you can see that, uh, look at uh, one tick below, they started to pull that liquidity as price came up. And now we're kind of test right into it, it looks like. Okay, we'll see if we get the test now. I, I, we probably will. Um, and um, uh, we'll see if these guys stay here or pull, or we get a combination. Right, or maybe just uh, we see the aggressor, uh, the buyers. They don't want to take on this high liquidity. They they don't think that it's going to go higher, so they stop buying, and we get exhaustion. Okay, that's another scenario that might play out. At the moment that is playing out, and we see sellers start to jump in on the other side here. Okay, if that's the case, and sellers get in control here, we're going to come down and test this 77 level. All right. So anyway, uh, some scenarios uh, to understand. Now look at them bidding up here at 78. Okay. So uh, they're bidding at a little higher level here. All right. So the auction has changed. So maybe we'll get our test into 80 now. All right. We need to get those aggressive buyers in to jump in here, press price up into this area. But now we're getting an understanding and putting together the transactions as well as understanding the liquidity and the context of, of uh, both the traded volume uh, and the auction. All right. Okay, any questions? It looks pretty good here. We're going to test 80. Um, you know, we can see higher highs here and more volume trading up at these higher highs. Okay, that's indicative of, uh, you know, trending market. Here we go, trading into 80 right now. Okay, and we're starting to answer that question. Did they did they pull or did they have the intent to trade? Well, they pulled most of it. Okay, some of it remained and we traded right into it here. Okay, here we go again. We got a little bit of a, uh, uh, a retest of it. Okay, maybe 82 now. Let's see if we can get up to 82. Okay, now note note how what just just occurred here. Okay, uh, we see now this is shorter term. We're making a distinction as well between some of this longer term liquidity and its intent to trade, and this shorter term liquidity here. Uh, and uh, it does not have the intent to trade. It came in here. Okay, let's uh, stop for a minute. Uh, use the hover over tool and look at we went from uh, over here uh, 22 contracts to boom 92 contracts. High liquidity, and it's only in here for oh, how long? Um, you know, uh, let's see, 480 to I mean, like 300 milliseconds, like a blink of an eye, basically, right? Uh, it's only in here for a very short time, uh, and um, uh, it, it skewed the, uh, the auction here, okay? All of a sudden, there's a lot of supply here, okay? and then it pulled though. So it had no intent to trade whatsoever. Uh, this is fake liquidity. Okay, and uh, finally we get uh, a little bit of a push to the upside here. Okay, 82 still on the chart here. All right, 102 contracts are sitting up here if the uh, if the buyers want to take them on. Okay. All right, well, that's what Bookmap is showing you. Uh, and uh, now we have a, a, a complete picture of what's going on in the market, All right? We're not looking at a, at a derivative here. Uh, we're looking at really a, a very objective view of the market, okay? We're showing a historical best bid and offer, uh, which also shows the spread, of course. Uh, but then we're showing the volume and the transactions, okay? Where they took place, how much overall shape of it, 
uh, and um, uh, yeah, it, you know the uh, how quickly uh, or slowly it might have uh, evolved here. Okay, we're showing that, and then we're showing you the uh, other side of the market where they're lining up to uh, to trade. Okay, and so we're seeing the the complete auction here, and uh, that's a um, uh, a pretty pretty nice view of uh, of the market under, understanding. Uh, look how they're bidding up here at this area between 77 and 78 at a higher area. All right, we've seen a lot of stuff. There's some volatility in this uh, in this market at the moment. Okay, we can start to read. Look at the layering in this area here. Okay, every other tick we're seeing high liquidity. Okay, this is pretty indicative of the uh, actions of larger players. Okay. They'll uh, spread their um, uh, liquidity out over uh, uh, every other tick like this. All right. So anyway, we're starting to now comprehend not only the liquidity where they are, but what kind of players they might be. All right. All right, guys. Well, let's wrap it up. Uh, and um, uh, that's uh, that's book map. And uh, you might want to take a look at some of these new uh, videos. Uh, for example, uh, the uh, uh, context of liquidity uh, and volume in a trend and uh, some of these new features and components. It's the uh, aggregate numbers that you see here for the last traded volume. OK, uh, it's a nice feature. It's been highly requested and uh, professional traders uh, uh, look at this to understand uh, areas of absorption, exhaustion and uh, and potentially trapped volume uh, just by the uh, last traded volume here. Okay, and the way that uh, we're now displaying this with the aggregate. All right. Anyway, I would encourage you to watch that video uh, and uh, understand what these numbers are signifying. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming, and uh, we will catch up with you next time.